over the last few videos, uh, I've been noticing, and some of you guys have been pointing out, that this sign is a little bit fragile and occasionally screws up. So I think today I'm going to see if I can upgrade it a little bit. Um, this was, well, I mean, it was always an evolving design anyway. You may, if you go back about a year, you'll notice it was only two segments long instead of three. Um, and now, actually, let's let's pull it forward here. Oops, see that? Hmm. So here it is in all its glory or goriness or whatever. Um, it is an Arduino Pro Micro, uh, which doesn't have its own built-in USB. So I've got uh, one of these USB interface boards. Basically, it's a CH340. Um, which would, which is basically the USB interface chip, which is on a na the most nano clones and whatever else. Let's see if I got one over here. Yeah, here's one that's not on there. So that's the CH340 down there. It's exactly the same chip that's on this guy. Um, so that's that end. Then over here, I've just got a 3.7, oh, a boost converter, basically a five volt boost converter because it's coming off this 18650 here, which is a crappy old one. It's only got 812 milliamp hours the last time I tested it. Um, and taped onto the back of it with Kapton tape is a charge controller for this guy. So, but since I always run it here, I don't think I need the battery really. So I might as well just go straight from the USB to power it. And I'm thinking I'll replace this guy with one that's got uh, its own USB so that I don't have to have this thing dangling off all the time because it's gotten shorted occasionally. And I'll permanentize all this wiring because right now it's just DuPont cables and stuff stuffed into the breadboard. But if I don't do that, I'm not sure how I'm going to... Uh, I'll have to come up with some kind of a case for it, I guess. Actually, hang on here. Will it fit in? Oh, it might fit in that project box. Okay. Actually, it will. Do I have room to? No? Okay. That's a good idea. But then, if it's in a project box sitting back there, I'll just have to put some kind of a kickstand into the back of it, I guess. Yeah. And where's the other half of that project box? There we go. Oh, and it can be screwed together. Do I have enough thickness? Yes, I do. Okay, so, but I don't think I have enough thickness for the battery. Well, do I maybe? No, I don't need it to be battery powered, I don't think. So for safe space saving, yeah, I think I'll use one of these little DigiSparks. I was initially thinking of using the standard DigiSpark. Where's one that's opened? Oh, none of those are open. Here, let's open this one. The standard DigiSpark, which just plugs straight into a USB extension cable, not unlike that one. But that would leave that part hanging out the side of the box, and not super thrilled about that. So I do have this other one in here, which is, which one? This one. Um, which is, the circuit is exactly the same, except for it's got a USB micro on the side of it. So I think I will use that. If it's, it should be powerful enough. I mean, it's an AT Tiny 85. This thing only takes three pins to control it. Um, data clock and chip select, I think it is. I'm just glancing over my shoulder at the code. Um, so I should be able to just put that on three of these pins on the, on the DigiSpark, I would think. Now then, uh, you got to be a little bit careful when you're when you're shopping on eBay for these things, um, because this board here is also an ATtiny Tiny eighty five, and it also bills itself as a as a DigiSpark, but its chip doesn't come with the bootloader on it with DigiSpark's bootloader, which is a a version of the Micronucleus, I think. Um, but it's somewhat customized because the way these DigiSpark modules work 
is you, when you're uploading to them, you don't plug them in, then click the upload button. You have to do it in the opposite order because their bootloader has a five second delay in it where it looks for a USB connection um, and handshakes with the IDE. The reason that's important is because you've only got eight pins on here. Two of them are power and ground, so you've only got six useful pins. Uh, and two of those are taken up by the USB, so you've only got really four pins. If you want to use the USB pins for something, or the pins that the USB talks on for something, you need to figure out how the the ATtiny knows whether it's talking to the computer or whether it's doing its thing. So the way the DigiSpark has done it with their customized bootloader is to just wait about five seconds and listen for a USB connection. If there isn't one there, then it assumes it's not connected to the computer and it carries on with its regularly scheduled program. Same as this one. I said this one doesn't have that, but there are physical connections to the same, to the two pins from the USB connector, but it, it didn't come preloaded with the bootloader. And I haven't needed to deal with it, so I haven't. Okay, so I've modified my sketch ever so slightly just because on here I was using pins 10, 11, and 12 for the uh, chip select clock and data. On here I'd only got six pins to work with, so I changed it to 0, 1, and 2. And I've connected the ground and 5 volts from here to the bus bars on here. Um, and I will connect the power directly to there. This is just coming from a phone charger. This isn't coming from my computer. But I've already uploaded the code onto there. You've seen code being uploaded before. It's not a big hairy deal. Haha. -ha. So that's good. That simplifies things completely. So now I no longer need the fire. I'll unplug that. So I no longer need that. Let me zoom back out here. I can use that for something else. I no longer need that and that. I no longer need that. That or that. So we're we're much more simpler now. That's good, but that wasn't really the janky part of it. The janky part of it was that it's all loosey-goosey connections in there. So now I need to solder things, I guess. This is fairly straightforward. Actually, I'll probably get the box ready first. I guess I should talk about these things a little bit. These are Max uh, 7219. Yeah, uh, Max 7219 um, chips, which are basically just a row and column output and a serial in, a shift in and shifts through and out. Oh, I've got paint splashed on these things from previous projects. That's neat. Um, and they just come in at the bottom uh, with VCC ground data in. Uh, chip select and clock in that order from here and then out the top uh, is the voltage and ground are just duplicated but then there's uh, data out and clock out and chip select out which I had jumpered down to the next one and then through there and jumpered down to the next one and you note that I didn't bother to put the output pins on this one because don't need them so uh, they're fairly standard. Uh, you can get those all over eBay. There's other versions. Um, I've got some of these ones as well. But these ones are designed... The, the module just goes over top. There's some uh, pin headers that go into there. Uh, they are designed to go together like this. And the pins line up. Focus. And then they got data in, clock in, chip select in over here, out in, out, and they just boogie along that way. And I was actually thinking that I might use these because I've got four of them. But 
this box will, hold, will only hold three modules. So I don't think I could get the four of them into here. Let me just put the four. Yeah, that wouldn't fit. And I'm trying to minimize jankiness here. Um, not that I'm offended by it, but I like things to work. So that needs to go pretty much centered. I can put it a little bit higher than center. So kind of like that. That will go on the back there. And this guy, I guess I'll put him right tight up to there and cut his hole through. So when it's running, so okay, where's a Sharpie here? So I'll put it so that the connector is right there. And this is, yeah, so this, the window's going to be kind of like that. That comes out that end. Yeah, and I got lots of clearance. Okay. There's the plan. To do is a little bit of cleanup here and there from the meltiness but that's not too bad that just takes no time at all how good are that is that okay so I have to just clean up a little bit more on the end in this corner and that shouldn't be too hard especially with the right tools And there we go. Nice, tight fit. Okay, there's a little bit of uh, ugly just from my knife slipping and cutting wide, but I can live with that. As I said, anytime we've done modeling, the three-foot rule applies. From back there, you don't really notice it. Okay, now that all of the uh, mechanical carving is done, I think I'm going to start with a bit of soldering um, so I'll run power and 5 volts from the uh, AT Tiny 85 module over to each of these guys here and I think I'll just uh, wrap it or, or tack it on and jump it across so I'm going to need four runs of that and I'm going to make them uh, about as long as the box is wide so they can separate it for maintenance presuming that I'm going to have to do maintenance on this at some point in the future so I'm doing here is just twisting and pre-tinning the wires that are going to jump across to make them easier or later that way when I jump from one to the next one I just have to tack it on there pre-tinning those so that when I go to solder onto them later it'll be easy and this is the ground wire tack him on there and the ground wire on the second module And then this goes up to the ground on here, which is that one. Should I come in from behind or? Let's see now how that, that's going to mount like that. So I should come in from the front. Yeah. 
Here we go. There's the ground. Now I'm just going to repeat that for each of the connections and come back for the next step, which will be, I guess, mounting. Okay, there's all the wiring done. It's a little bit ugly. Just trim these stray strands off that ground because I don't like that. But other than that, looks all good. So, if I did everything right, I should be able to just plug this in and wait for the five seconds that that bootloader takes. And there we go. <laughs> Let's smooth that out a little bit. That looks just like it should. Awesome. Now all that's left is the mechanical mounting, which shouldn't be that big a headache, you'd think, right? I'm going to use hot glue because it's quick and it works. And I'm going to try and just get it onto the LED module and not onto the circuit board. So I'm just going to let that one cool a little bit. Actually, I can probably do the other end while I'm waiting. You're not going to be able to see this very well. And I'll let those cool and then figure out how I'm going to get at the middle one. I'm still not quite clear on that yet. Okay, so this glue is cooled enough to be firm. I've peeled this board carefully up off the pins, which is why I didn't want to glue it down. And I think I'm going to just try and get a little bit of glue up in the top of here. Not a huge amount, just enough to hold it. I would put some down at the bottom, but I think that would... Uh, collide with the chip so I'm not going to do that so I'll just and the, okay so the reason I've got this sitting face down well partly just to get at it but partly so that these things glue flush to the front panel uh, so when I pick it up see that's pretty much flush and that one's pretty much flush and I'm pressing down as it's cooling just so that they do go nice and square and I'll let that one cool for a little bit longer and uh, then probably repeat with this end and I did discover that I can add just a thin stripe down the bottom here and then trowel it out even thinner and it won't interfere with the, uh, with the chip so that's good okay those two are done now then, this one fits nice and snugly in the middle, so that shouldn't be a big deal. I'll just throw some hot glue up at the top here, because that's mostly what's going to be holding it. Slide that up, and I'll put a little bit down at the bottom. And again, just trowel that in with my screwdriver. And then hold this firm and hope for the best. And the last piece of the puzzle is to get this guy in here. And since it's not going to be sitting perfectly flat on the bottom, I'm just going to plug it into... This cable's not plugged into power right now. So I'm just going to plug it in there and use it as an alignment thing, alignment tool. So I'll just put a big spooge of hot glue there. Set this guy down, try not to burn my fingers. Okay, now that the glue is dried, I'll just put these guys back in place. Being careful not to bend or mash the pins. And let's see, you know, that goes that way, and yeah, the connector goes that way, so fold those wires in. There we go. Now then, I found some screws 
that all should fit there. Um, these are just some that were in my accumulation, of course. As the old saying goes, I'd rather have something and not need it than need it and not have it. And these ones have been kicking around for a long time. And I find uses for them all over the place. They're in several different projects that I've uh, made. And since these cheap cases didn't come with screws, might as well use some that I've got. They're not self-tapping screws, they're machine screws, but this soft plastic works well. So now then, the moment of truth. Which way does that go? Goes that way. Hmm. There we go. That five second delay on that uh, Digispark is going to throw me off for quite some time. But there we go, the sign renewed and refreshed and hopefully not as susceptible to abuse as the old one was. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you guys stopped by to see what I'm up to. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you've got anything to say about what happened here this evening, please leave it down in the comments. This wasn't you know, a massive project. It was just something that I felt like needed doing. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions. I already said that. Yeah. Um, I'll talk to you later.